Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, thanks for uh, attending uh, Nest as well. Um, it's a great turnout. So glad to see a lot of growth in the community over the past year. Um, I'm uh, Jack. I'm a program manager in Microsoft's Linux Systems Group. And I'm joined here by the lovely Dusty Mabe. And we're going to talk to you about uh, Fedora on the world's computer and how we're onboarding Fedora onto Microsoft Azure. So uh, like I mentioned, I'm Jack. Some of you might know me, some of you might not. Uh, I've been a Fedora person <laughs> for a long time, longer than I'd like to admit. Um, uh, since the project started, basically, uh, I used to run marketing. I created Ambassadors and uh, FUDCon, which eventually turned into this, which is awesome. So yay, FUDCon. Uh, I'm an Alma Linux contributor as well. And uh, I help make Linux awesome on Azure as part of our Linux systems group. And we are hiring. So if you're interested in doing cool things, please let me know. So we already picked a name. So we'll skip this. Garfunkel it is. So uh, Microsoft Azure is the world's computer. Uh, we have points of presence in 140 countries, uh, 200 data centers, which is mind boggling. Um, 175,000 miles of fiber. I can't get fiber to my home. And we were talking about this in the sponsor social before. So I'm a little sad about that. Um, but the one surprising thing that you may not know is that actually 60% uh, of cores and 60% of the images in our uh, marketplace on Azure are Linux. So Linux actually makes up a really large part of Azure which I think, you know, most people hear Microsoft and automatically assume like, you know, Windows, but uh, that's actually not the case. And I have a really cool link down there at the bottom to like an interactive um, demo of uh, the Azure infrastructure, like worldwide. It's like this like 3D globe and shows you like all the pops and all the data centers and stuff. So if anyone wants to check that out, it's actually, I was impressed by it. So uh, that's really cool. <clears throat> So the bad thing about Azure, Fedora was missing until today. Um, if anyone has been following along, uh, we've been trying to bring Fedora into Azure for quite some time. Um, the primary impediments are, so the, 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 the way to get a distro into Azure um, until now was through Azure Marketplace. And there are really some issues there um, because that's really focused on commercial offerings and like, you know, having your own tax ID <clears throat> and stuff like that. Um, business requirements around SLA, supportability, some legal concerns, and some of those uh, kind of really didn't fit with, you know, how Fedora operates. So um, there was lots of discussion back and forth and just trying to make this happen for a very long time. Um, on the technical front, there are also issues like making sure uh, stuff like WA Linux agent is included in there. And that's uh, like our provisioning agent, which is um, does a lot more than just that. But basically, that's the gist of it, similar to cloud in it. So um, there were lots of challenges, but we made it happen. So now, uh, how did we do this? With something we like to call Azure Community Galleries. So Azure Community Galleries are a new function of Azure, a new feature of Azure, I should say, which uh, is in public preview right now. And uh, what it lets you do is it lets content publishers that have non-commercial, non-proprietary content to just basically set up their own galleries and uh, share their images with everyone in Azure. So uh, like I said, you can share those out to all Azure users. You don't need to worry about things like multi-tenancy and permissions and stuff like that. So it's truly like a purely public gallery. Um, images are also, the, the uh, community galleries are 100% free. The only cost associated with that is obviously uh, image storage fees, which are, you know, not, not too bad um, considering what the size of the images are, but, you know, we need to make sure that people are aware of that too. Um, other than that, it's a very standard image creation process. Um, there's nothing you do differently or, you know, special um, for the community galleries. Um, and also one of the biggest and most important parts are that projects provide their own legal agreement. So really any open source publisher 
um, that wants to get their software out to the larger Azure audience can basically release it onto community galleries and, and you know, put up their terms essentially. And so, you know, you're, you retain the same license as whatever your upstream license is. Um, there's no like funny business there. And then also all community gallery images are community supported. So it's not something that um, Microsoft necessarily, um, you know, has any um, outside agreement with. Now, if, if there was an entity that wanted to provide support, that's totally okay. Um, it's just, you know, the implication um, in anything in community galleries is that if you're looking for support, you're going to work through the community in order to get that support. So Fedora and Fedora Core OS. Uh, so Fedora Core OS images are already actually built. They've actually had those um, for quite a long time uh, for Azure. So stay tuned for the Dusty Mabe show coming up where you'll learn more all about that. Um, and Fedora proper images are on the way. Um, you can follow along on Pagger. Um, we have kickstarts uh, ready to go, basically. And then just because I know the question's going to come up, right? What about WSL2? Um, we have hurdles. We'll get there. Um, you know, this is uh, a first step. It's, uh, it's, it's actually a big step. And so uh, hopefully we can eventually get to a place where we can have Fedora on WSL as well. So I will turn it off to uh, turn it over to Dusty and uh, the Dusty Mabe Show. Take it away. Yeah, I was, I was going to say uh, the Dusty Mabe Show makes it sound way more exciting than, than what it probably is. The Dusty Mabe, no show. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, so who is the Dusty Mabe? Uh, there's actually more than one of me, but don't don't try to find the other one. Uh, long story short, I uh, have a wife and two kids and two dogs who were our kids before we had kids. Um, we live in North Carolina, uh, and I enjoy learning and experimenting with new technologies. I really like, uh, I guess, the whole software industry. It moves fast. It's exciting. Um, originally, I was focused a little more on hardware which doesn't move as fast. Uh, but now I'm an engineer at Red Hat. Uh, I work on Fedora Core OS and Red Hat Core OS, which is uh, the foundation of OpenShift. Um, I was previ previously involved in a project called Atomic Host, uh, and that kind of led into Fedora Core OS. Um, I was also involved in the Fedora Cloud Working Group for a long time, still kind of am, but David Duncan is kind of running the show there now, and I, I just try to help him when I can. Next slide. So uh, specifically Fedora Core OS. In Fedora Core OS, as Jack mentioned, we've had Azure images since our very first release of Fedora Core OS. Um, this bullet point right here is actually a link, if you had access to the slides, to our very first release with uh, the Azure image in it. That was from Fedora 31 in December of 2019. So we've had an image for a long time uh, probably didn't have docs off the bat uh, and definitely didn't have CI. We had CI starting at the end of March this year. Uh, so we finally worked it out with Azure. They started a, a, a open source credits program and we got some credits from them with, with an account for Fedora. And so now we're actually running CI against the Azure images that we create, but there wasn't really, you know, a way for us to share them with other people until now. Next slide. Uh, yeah, so our user experience was kind of lacking. So for Azure, um, you know, for our all of the different cloud images that we create, which we have a lot of, uh, there's this download page, right? This is a screenshot from our download page where you can go and actually download the file. So for Azure, it's a compressed VHD file, um, and you know, as a user, you go there and grab it first and then you can use it and i'll go through that a little bit more on the next slide so here's actually um if you go to the next slide here's our uh, pictures of our documentation so these are screenshots so first you actually have to download the azure image so it's just a file download it then you have to upload it upload the file and create the image before you get to this next slide which is actually launching the vm instance this is where you want to be from step one right you want to basically be as close to success as possible um 
And for example, comparing to some of our other cloud providers, if you go to the next slide, you'll see we have a separate tab, which is cloud launchable, right? So like these are cloud providers where you can actually go directly to the cloud provider and launch Fedora Core OS as, you know, as quick as you possibly could, right? So you can click on these links on this page and go directly to the cloud provider, assuming you're signed in and launch an instance, or you could use the CLI tools and use the, the references. So like the AMI or the image family name and launch those directly. That's the experience we wanna give people, but we haven't been able to do that for Azure. Uh, if you go to the next slide, it's actually, I'm reusing Jack's slide from earlier, but with Azure Community Galleries, now we as a organization can share images publicly. We are an organization, Fedora, who has non-commercial, non-proprietary content that we want to share. We don't really want to sign a bunch of contracts and stuff like that. Uh, we just want people to be able to use it uh, and to basically reuse our existing license that everybody who's using Fedora uses. Uh, so now we have the way that we can do that. And so we're, we're pursuing that. If you go to the next slide. Um, so like... For me, as I approach different cloud providers, because we work with a lot of ones, I like to kind of have a mental model of how the the different cloud providers work and map them to one another, because that allows me more sanity over time. So specifically for images here, for AWS, you kind of create an image, mark it public, and you just share that image reference uh, with everybody. I think they have some more constructs that they've come out with recently, but I, I'm not as familiar with them. Um, with GCP, the way we do it for Fedora Core OS was we have uh, an image family that we created, and then we create images, and then we add them to the image family as we do releases for Fedora Core OS. Uh, with Azure, they have a very similar setup to GCP, except this, there's this outer layer thing called a community gallery. So first you create a community gallery, then you create an image definition, similar to an image family, and then you create images and add them as image versions to the image definition. So at least for what we have with uh, Fedora Core OS for GCP and what we will have for Azure, you'll be able to follow essentially a reference that gets updated over time as we do new releases every two weeks. So as long as you're following that reference, you'll always be up to date uh, when you're launching new instances. Next slide. So what's next for us with Fedora Core OS? Uh, so we're hoping to have this finalized for Fedora 37. There's a few things we need, still need to do. One is uh, we need to automate essentially the addition of images to image galleries, similar to how we're uh, adding images to image families in GCP. Um, we need to update our Fedora Core OS Golang SDK, which is called Mantle, to essentially make the correct API calls as part of our release process. Um, the other piece we wanted to kind of wait on and deliver at the same time as 64-bit ARM images are in, currently in preview in Azure. Uh, and we support AR64 with uh, Fedora Core OS. So we wanted to essentially release them at the same time. That's still in tech preview, but I think it's exiting soon. So hopefully by Fedora 37, it'll all come together. Uh, next slide. Demo so, time. OK, demo. So earlier we got the suggestion for Garfunkel as the uh, name for that we should use. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. And so I actually scripted this um, process so that uh, it could kind of run in the background as we were giving the talk. So if I scroll up here, I can see uh, I ran the date command first and then I ran my script with Garfunkel as an argument. So it started just afternoon in my local time zone here, uh, which is when this talk started. And we essentially have a gallery name of Garfunkel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then basically I ran a few commands using the Azure CLI uh, that created the community gallery, enabled public sharing, created an image definition. And then finally, if I go all the way down here, an image version within that image definition. Um, so the image that I used in this image version had previously been created by me. That takes a little bit more time to, you know, 
upload things and create that image. But those are two steps that I also could have automated in this process uh, with a local file upload and then Azure image create command or something like that. I forget exactly the, the syntax. But I'm going to toss it back to Jack. He has a separate account from me, right? I don't have access to Jack's account. And he's going to see if now he can use the image that I just created. Hey, all right. So this is the Azure portal. So we're going to go and create a resource. And we're going to tell it that we want to create a virtual machine. So resources get deployed into a resource group. So I'm just going to type Garfunkel there. And we're going to call it test. Uh, I believe you shared that in East US, uh, Dusty, correct? Yes. OK, East US. Happens to, be, happens to be where I'm located. Yes, so one thing that you need to keep in mind is that uh, images need to be replicated into the regions you want them to be available. So if you don't share it out in a certain region, it won't be there. Yeah. And then yeah, for AWS, I think we replicate everywhere. So we'll probably try to do the yeah. same. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this is where you see all the images here. And then we have here on the left uh, community images, which is where the community galleries live. And so I'm going to search for Garfunkel. Yeah. Garfunkel Gen 2. So that is the image that I'm going to create uh, on a small VM so I don't get in trouble. And we're going to generate a new key. Let's just let this run real quick. And by the way, now would be a good time uh, for any QA. If anyone has any questions and stuff, you can uh, post it there in the QA tab on Hopin. Yep. I see one at least at the bottom. Uh, is there a link to the Fedora Community Gallery image? Searching on Google does not seem to yield anything. So we don't have it done just yet. We basically are in the process of kind of getting to the point where we automate everything. I could publish one today, um, uh, but it wouldn't be automated. And what, there's not a lot of value in that, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're going to work on automating it. And also, I believe the AR64 ARM instance stuff is coming soon. Uh, so we'll just deliver it all at the same time. Yeah, we were actually testing that earlier today. So, I mean, it should theoretically work fine. Um, but uh, the ARM GA <clears throat> is coming really, really soon. So once that's ready, um, we should have that available as well. So why is Jack wearing an Ubuntu jacket? It's not an Ubuntu jacket. Why would you think... There are no logos. I don't discriminate, man. There, there is like a shadow of a logo, like no, on your right hand be, side. So it used to be like a Kevin Durant um, basketball thing. Uh, uh, but I'm not gonna lie. I thought the same thing when I saw it <laughs> up close. You should have told me that before, Dusty. I'm actually only wearing this because it's boiling here and the air conditioning is on, and so. If I'm not wearing this, I'd probably be shivering over in the corner. So by the way, this is taking <clears throat> a little bit of time. Um, <clears throat> that's probably because I'm. this is the first time anyone is deploying this particular image. So it's probably getting copied to like several places um, in some Azure data center somewhere in Virginia, most likely. So... <clears throat> Yeah, we have one. We have second. one other question. Uh, there are buttons for easily starting Fedora in AWS. Ah, uh, could we add similar shortcuts for Azure? I see. Yeah. So uh, the link that Pavel gave was for Fedora Cloud Base, and so yeah, there was a link earlier in the presentation uh, for a Pagger issue for against the Cloud Sig for creating an Azure image. Um, so, like, that would need to happen first, and then I imagine we would want to update the the website to be equivalent, like, you know, AWS image, click here, GCP image, click here, Azure, click here, et cetera. Uh, so yeah. anyone yeah. that we're updating 
um, you know, in the cloud directly. We we'd like people to use that because like otherwise we're we're doing that work for nothing. Yeah, and uh, that that is the plan to have it on there. So once those images are done, um, which should be pretty soon, um, we will update the site. Let me see if there are any other questions. I actually am interested in clicking through in the presentation for that infrastructure map that you were talking about. Jack. Oh, I, I believe it's just infrastructure map dot Microsoft dot com. Uh, I can go back and check and post it, but OK, yes, it's created. So we should have an IP in a second. All right, so I've already, this is an SSH client and yes, I'm using Windows. Don't blame me, I work for Microsoft. Um, that's the host, that's the username. I already put in the key. And so if all goes well, and I don't know where it went, we should be able to SSH into our very own Fedora Core OS instance launched on Microsoft Azure. Yahoo! What's the uptime on it? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually oop. up two minutes. Two so minutes. That's Keep the that. deployed time. So um, I guess let's get back into the uh, run through the rest of the deck. Did we skip a slide? No, we didn't. Okay, so cool. So how can you get involved? That's what this is all about. Um, please do get involved. Uh, Fedora Cloud SIG, which we butchered the spelling on, um, is there. Uh, Fedora Cloud on Libera, their bi-weekly meetings uh, every other Thursday, I think, or Wednesday. I, I, I've lost track of time at this point. But uh, yeah, the cal <laughs> calendar's up on the site. Um, and for Fedora Core OS working group, uh, issues forums docs uh the mailing list of course uh fedora core os on libera and on matrix and um the weekly meetings are uh, on wednesday there so please we do need your efforts yeah david duffy's saying thursday so yes thursday sorry um yes please do get involved uh we can use everyone's help there's definitely a lot to do and uh we're glad to be able to bring um fedora to the world's computer, Microsoft Azure, and uh, we hope that you know if you're if you are interested in uh, helping out and or deploying Fedora on Azure, uh, please message me. I will try to see if I can get you some credits to try that out. Um, and you know we're just it's a, it's a really this day has been a long time in the making. So uh, thank you to everyone involved. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.